Hi guys, welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. Now today I want to show you how to do this stunning cake. I just hold it towards the camera. The very popular doll cake or barber cake but with a beautiful ruffled dress. I'm going to take you through everything step by step, how to construct the cake, what you need to use for the top and how to do the ruffles absolutely everything so enjoy guys please like and share for me and do subscribe to the channel if you like what you see let's get cracking so the first part to constructing the doll cake that we are making i have made a seven inch round victoria sponge cake you can use any type of cake you want a six inch round victoria sponge cake and then finally, for the dome of the actual dress, just on the top, I've used one of the hemisphere tins, again, six inch hemisphere tin. Now, I like to put an awful lot of filling into my cakes, so that's what we need to do next, as well as a little bit of cake carving just to build it up. So what I'm going to do, just so I know where I'm carving, is pick up my six inch cake, the recipe for this cake I also have on my YouTube channel and the amount of cake here is exactly what I use in that recipe. It evens out beautifully in between all three tins if you want to give it a try and it's the Victoria sponge cake. So, the reason I have the base of mine slightly larger is because I want to give it a more natural flow. This is where there's not much cake carving involved, but just a little bit. So you just literally start to cut away the bottom of your cake at an angle, but don't touch the middle cake. I'm just going to remove these remaining pieces, but as you can see, straight away, once this is all crumb coated and covered with fondant, that's before we've even added the ruffles, it's going to look absolutely adorable. Now, for the top one, I am going to carve a little bit away just because you'll find with these hemisphere cakes, they'll slightly go over the six inch round. So we've not cut much cake away at all, but we've cut away enough to get a nice even flow. Right, I'm now just going to lift these two away. I don't want to work with these just yet. So I've removed the six inch cake and the six inch hemisphere cake. I have just got the carved seven inch that's going to be underneath. So now I want to make a dam. You'll see me do this on one of my blogs on my website. But basically, with some buttercream, which I also have a lovely recipe for, if you double that recipe that I have on my YouTube, it will make the right amount for this cake because I like to use plenty. So you just do a ring and then you get your jam. I'm using strawberry jam, some people prefer raspberry. Just break it up a little bit first. Place plenty into the center. Like I said, I like to use an awful lot of filling especially when you've got that gorgeous moist cake. Okay, I'm just going to spread that like so. Now yeah, move that to one side so that we're ready for the wash. And then all you do with your dam is go over it again in rings. That's lovely. Now, before I put this in the fridge, I'll just show it to you, closer to the camera. These sides are now exposed to the air. I don't want that. So using some of my leftover buttercream, I'm just gonna place on a thin layer and then use my knife to smooth it out. So this now wants to go into the fridge just to harden up so we can support the rest. 
It's as simple as that. 30 minutes in the fridge and then I'll show you what to do next. So all I'm going to do now, now this has gone nice and firm as you can see, is add the second layer. This prevents the bulging on the side. Push it down because all that buttercream is lovely and hard. And then just repeat what we did before. Make sure this stands really secure because I am actually going to be adding this part this time. But it's the base that needed to be really strong because it's holding two more layers and another filling. But I'm going to add that like so. Bring in the rest of my buttercream already made. Remember, I have a recipe for this buttercream and you just need to make two batches and that'll be more than enough for this particular cake. Use some of the remainder from the piping bag around the sides. So you're not wasting any. There we go. And then finally, something you'll all be familiar with, a crumb coating. So literally, I'm going to start with my small knife first, I think. And start further down here. We're literally just going to cover this entire cake with buttercream. So that's pretty much it, you get the idea. I am going to neaten this up. And I'm going to give you a good tip for doing that. Using a palette knife, which I haven't used yet, I place this over the gas stove just to make it warm. And then when you're going round, it gets rid of all the ridges and makes it lovely and smooth. So I haven't smoothed this yet. I'm going to do that. Well, I'll just give you a rough idea of the shape that we're getting there. So we've got a nice flowing dress. And then once the ruffles are on, and the doll pick is in the top. I'm going to take you through that because some people do actually put the entire doll inside the cake. Personally, I think you get more cake if you do it this way and you just use the proper pick. And I shall take it from there with you because the next step will be to covering this with fondant just to seal in all of that freshness. So after leaving this in the fridge, all I have done is rolled out 900 gram of the colour of my choice. I'm choosing to do this Barbie cake or this doll cake in pinks and blues because I think the colours go really well together. The reason I've chosen 900 gram, you will have plenty left over. It's the same amount you would use to cover an 8 inch cake but because this is a lot taller, because we've got a 7 inch and then two 6 inch cakes, I just wanted to be on the safe side. So roll it out into a circle like before. Lift it up using your rolling pin and just gently place over the cake. I'll just move these out of the way. Now it's a case of negotiating all of these pleats. Take your time, fondant does not set straight away. And I find the best way to do this is with your fingers. Then, using your smoothers, like before, just go around the edges. Now that we have a nice rim around the base, cut off the excess fondant. All of the excess fondant can now go back into a bag to be used again. And as you can see, I do have quite a bit left. You don't have to do any of this. If you want, you can just add your ruffles to the buttercreamed cake. But I like to seal my cakes with fondant. I work well with fondant. I'm comfortable with it, but it does help the cake stay fresher for longer. 
So the next job is literally just to neaten up the cake. And that I am really happy with. Now I'm just going to hold this to the camera. And what I'm going to do with this now is place it in the fridge again, but this time overnight. It will help all of this fondant go hard so that I can lift it up and place it directly onto my cake drum. The next part I'm going to show you is how to decorate the doll pick. In the meantime, before we make a start on those stunning ruffles. So this is the doll pick that I was talking about which you can buy from many cake decorating stores. I've just tied the hair up in a bobble just so it doesn't get into the actual gum paste. All of this part is completely food grade and that, will get, and that is what gets inserted into the top of the cake. I'm just going to show you the basic way to cover this. So using gum paste, I'm going to cover the front and then the back. Now the reason I've cut it this shape using a scalpel is because it will go on her body much easier as you can see. So to stick it to the body, all you need to do is get some edible glue. Again, mine's shop bought but you can make your own. I'm just going to cover the front of this dummy with the glue. And then simply pick up your modelling paste and negotiate it so it fits nicely. Using your scalpel, if you just cut off any excess fondant or should I say modelling paste. And it really is as simple as that. Now if I just turn her around, I'm going to cover the back just by doing a triangle. I'm going to let the front set first so that I can lay her on the front without damaging anything that I've just added and then do the back. Whilst the front is still quite soft however, if you really want to, you can add some of the favourite silver balls. So you just add them in a random design. You may need some edible glue to go underneath. like so and then just decorate it how you want it the next step will be to show you how to do the ruffles for the cake and this is the fun part where all the hard work slowly starts to come together i just want to show you a little something that i did to a previous cake before we do the ruffles so i've added the cake directly from the fridge to my decorated cake drum easy to lift on the sides because all that fondant is lovely and hard. I have then cut something similar to a triangle but with a straight edge. This is because I want to place this on the cake here like so. So to do that I'm going to add some edible glue to the back. Perfect. Now I'm just going to lift this up and place it at the bottom. It's going to be a bit more difficult for me because I want you to see everything that I am doing. Normally, obviously, I'd have this facing me. And then the rest just going up the cake like so. Don't worry about this top section here because it's going to get covered. I just think it gives your cake more depth because then the ruffles are going to be going all the way around the cake. Your Barbie pick will also be ready now. So I'm just going to take out the bobble, like so. Now the arms, I'm going to have facing forward, just so they don't get in the way of the ruffles. I want to place some glue in the centre of my cake, just here, like so. And then I'm just going to place on the Barbie pick. So gently pushing down, lovely, and if I just take this off the turntable for a moment, 
she already looks fantastic. She could do with a bit of a hairdo. <laughs> but now we're going to start with the ruffles and she'll look even more amazing. As you can see, I have already made a start on making these absolutely stunning ruffles for my cake. If I just turn it round, I have left a space and as you can see I'm working from the bottom up. So how do we do these ruffles and what are you going to need? You can stick the ruffles onto the cake using edible glue with just using a brush but I find a steamer is a very good investment. It also gets rid of all the leftover icing sugar. You're going to need a foam pad. A ball tool is very important. I prefer the ones with the metal ends as there's a little bit more weight on there and they're easier to use. I'm just going to be using this tool to help me stick the ruffles onto the cake. You can use your fingers if you want to, but just something with a pointy end, that's all you need, just to help you get those ruffles on there. And as you can see, all I have done in my chosen colours is cut so far lots of little circles so let's get to it and i'm going to zoom in right on here and show you exactly how to make that perfect ruffle so the first thing that you need to do i've got one of each color at the moment on the foam pad is get the large end of your ball tool and you literally just go around the edges in a circular motion ends up looking a little bit like that. I'm going to do this to both of them. So now what I want to do, you don't need any edible glue for this. I'm going to fold them the opposite way. So I did the ball tool on the top. I want the ruffles to be facing out. So turn it upside down. Fold in half and just pinch in the center. And then fold in half again and pinch in the centre. And it really is as simple as that. Give it a little sausage shape on the end just to secure it all. But that is how simple it is to make a ruffle. I'm going to do it with this. So they are very simple to make but also extremely time consuming. This cake has taken me ages to cover and it's still not completed. So I've done the same with that. And then just to stick them to the cake, like I said, I'm using a steamer here. Basically, you just pour some water in there. It'll heat up, you can hear it doing that now, a bit like a kettle. But you're able then to get off the leftover icing sugar and use the water as a glue as well, but without leaving lots of stains and things, because it's just literally going to come out of here as steam. So, I'm just going to place some, use it just down here, not too much. This also helps with the ruffle effect actually, because once the ruffles are on there, bear in mind it's modeling paste, the steam just help them droop just a little bit. So it's perfect. Now I'm doing alternating colors here. So I've got pink. So now I want to add blue. And it really is as simple as that. Just give your ruffle a little ruffle. And then above the blue, I want to add a pink. Perfect. And that is literally all you do to add your ruffles. So happy baking, guys. And I would love to see your Barbie doll cakes when you're finished. And stay tuned, subscribe, because there'll be more tutorials coming your way very soon.